Three big-time defensive linemen couldn't be on the move here in the NFL. How would we handle each of the situations? We got that and much more for you on today's episode of Locked On NFL. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, football fans, and welcome in to another episode of Locked On NFL, your daily podcast breaking down all the biggest stories from around the National Football League every single Monday through Friday here as a proud part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks so much, as always, speaking of Locked On NFL, your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, you can always subscribe and follow for free on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss the latest episodes, and it is Tuesday. So you've got Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on Twitter and Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter as well. Don't mind me chuckling. I had a joke in my mind, but I'm not going to say it. We appreciate you very much for being here with us as we continue. <laughs> electric <on>. start. <laughs> Just electric start. Gotta love it. I uh, appreciate you very much as always for being here with us. And today's episode of Locked on NFL is brought to you by friends at Bird Dogs. Check out birddogs.com slash locked on NFL. Use the promo code locked on NFL for a water bottle with your next order. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. On today's episode of Locked on NFL, it's Tuesday, so we're going to get to our yike and like, including some prime time production. We're going to take a look at a couple of wide receivers making some uh, news across the league. But first, we're going to start off with three defensive linemen and a little game this week. Luke, I thought it'd be a little bit fun. We do our yike and like, play another <sighs> game this week. I know, I know how much I'm dreading this. Forward to it. <laughs> it's not it's going to so be hard. easy. It's not going to be easy. So, so Luke, this is our version of a very, um, very popular game out there that you play amongst friends that we can't fully say the name of here on the show. So I'll call it Mary Blank Blank uh, because there's a lot of trigger warnings in this title. Uh, so the way that we're going to go about it is extend, hold out, trade. And Much more extend PC. being about – say again? Much more PC. Much more PC. And so extend being a little bit more about coming up with a long-term contract for one of the three players, a holdout being that you're willing to try to push through this year, kind of go through the stare down, reevaluate where you are next season, and then trade in this instance effectively being the like, all right, we're done, giving up on, on all this. And the three players that we're going to use here are Kansas City Chiefs defensive lineman Chris Jones. Brian Burns, edge rusher, defensive lineman of the Carolina Panthers, and in San Francisco 49ers, defensive lineman, also edge rusher in Nick Bosa. You got to extend one. You got to go down the holdout uh, trail with another, and then you got to trade the other. Which way are you going? This sucks because all three of these <laughs> players are great and should be extended. That's always going to be the way that I feel about this. So, if you're, yep. But if you're going to make me choose, it's like this really hard thing um, because all these situations are – particularly unique to themselves, right? Like right. the way the relationship that the 49ers have with Nick Bosa is going to be different than the ones the chiefs have with Chris Jones, right? Mm -hmm. um, Chris Jones has been a chief for a long time. So is Nick Bosa. Brian Burns is younger, right? Um, so it's different. Uh, thinking about it, thinking through it though, Nick Bosa seems to me like he's on a tier above the other two a little bit. Mm -hmm. All excellent players. I just feel like Nick Bosa has a greater impact on his defense than the other two. Um, mm -hmm. It's he's just such a cornerstone of what a lot of people are seeing as the best defense in the league. So I think I have to click extend on him. Um, I just don't see a world where the 49ers can seriously stare him down and be like, we don't need you. We're going to pay you. Right. What, you know, yes. like <laughs> right. I don't see that. But if I look at like Chris Jones, they've had Chris Jones for a while. He's an older player. He's a defensive tackle. Um, and they have a whole bunch of other stuff that's really fun on that defense that uh, I feel like they could maybe play hardball with him a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know? And same with, with Carolina that has a, a whole bunch of studs on that, on that defense that make it. They, they also, I don't know, the, the Panthers are not in Super Bowl or bust mode, so it feels like they could maybe get away with playing a little bit of hardball here. But I think I'm just going to do the cop-out thing and go positional value. 
and just say, mm. look, edge rushers get more pressures. So I'll stare down the edge rusher and I'll trade Chris Jones, uh, who also has, I think a lot of his contract will move away f- with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that can help too with Brian Burns. You're trading him to somebody that then has to do an extension with him. And that situation is a little different with Chris Jones. So I feel like, yeah, I'll, I'll trade Chris Jones. I don't feel very good about it. Cause like that is like <laughs> right. the center, the core of your defense is your defensive tackles. Right. Uh, but if I got to trade somebody, I guess I'll go with Jones. I'll, uh, put Brian Burns in the hold in holdout jail and we'll extend Nick Bosa and the 49ers need to move past that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Luke, I'm, I am 100% aligned with you. Uh, I'm extending Nick Bosa. I'm willing to go down the holdout road with, with Brian Burns and I'm willing to trade uh, Chris Jones. Not, not to a point where I would say, Oh, well the Kansas city chiefs should trade Chris Jones. This is no. if all, all if three of these were... p- teams should just capitulate and give their players what they want. Yeah. Because just these give are way up. too important. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just give up and give them what they need. I think the, the, the other thing to keep in mind here too, is that you have sort of the, the rookie contract um, environment for both the 49ers and the Carolina Panthers. Both of them are in situations where you don't have the high level positional costs of quarterback and you're not going to, for a few years, you have sort True. of the, the, the veteran presence in that quarterback room already too with Sam Darnold and Andy Dalton. I don't know how comfortable you necessarily are with both those players that are effectively like the same guy. And I don't just mean that they're because backups, they like, they're, but yeah, you know, like they're veteran backups who, you know, can go in there and, and, and possibly still win you a game if, if you needed them to. Right. They can limp you through two quarters while someone's nursing an ankle. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So like you're in a good, good space in the position that matters most on your team when it comes to quarterback, the next most important positions are either going to be the guy that's protecting that guy or the guy that's going after the other quarterback. And so for me, Nick Bosa, Brian Burns get at the top of that. If we're talking about the positional value part, but then the money just makes sense. Whereas with Chris Jones, you're kind of in a situation where you have, you know, one of the best, well, not one of, but you have one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. You have the best quarterback in the NFL. You're in a different sort of, space as a team in that case and so i i kind of get it but if i had to make the decision amongst all three myself i, I would go the exact same route I, I'm, I'm keeping you know i'm working on keeping the two edge rushers i'm willing to move off for chris jones and especially at a position where i might be able to replace a little bit more easily even if it's one or two years down the road but i also have a quarterback that look if chris jones isn't out there getting after the the opposing quarterback i've got one in patrick mahomes that is still going to keep me in a game in that right. case so you know, like you mentioned, just every team is going to have a different circumstance with all three of these guys. But I feel sure. a lot more comfortable going down the uh, having a little bit less patience around the Chris Jones situation than the Bosa or Burns uh, situations. And so uh, I'm right there with you on all three of these guys. And and with Carolina, too, it's like even if the, I mean, they don't have Mahomes, right? But they kind of hope they do. Like, that's yeah, you what you do yeah. when you have the first overall pick. Right. Um, and whether or not Bryce young turns out to be the guy we think he is, the Panthers are going to behave as though he is because there is no option other than to go all in with the guy you took first overall. Right. So they can kind of sort of behave like, yeah, you know, like if we do need to be like an offensive team, we did just take a quarterback and trade the farm with Chicago to go get him. Uh, and we, you know, trade away DJ Moore and all that. So there is that. And then also Brock Purdy exists. Yes, he is also there. And he, he was is enough, a person, allegedly. <laughs> he was enough to make a team go from feeling like they were going to get the next Patrick Mahomes in Trey Lance to going with Mr. Right. Irrelevant in, in, in Brock Purdy. So, like, obviously, he's done enough for that franchise to make you feel like, okay, we're ready to commit exactly. to, if, to, if you to don't, that situation. Yeah, if you don't have Brock Purdy, you don't feel like closing the curtains on Trey Lance is a reasonable thing to do for sure. Right. But I don't think that that say that level of commitment that they have in Purdy slash Darnold. Oh, hundred uh, percent rises to the level that allows them to say, "Yeah, we don't need this defense to carry it." You know, like <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. And, the, and and the brand of football in San Francisco is still very much defense and run oriented. Round ground, right? like, ground and pound. Christian McCaffrey, yeah. Debo Samuel doing stuff. Yeah, they're going to throw to Debo. They're going to throw to Kittle. But it's it is going to be more of a. Um, a physical brand, which I think is what they're trying to do. They're, they're trying to counter all these speedy small boy defenses. Speedy small boys. That's the mm-hmm. name of my band, actually. <laughs> um, coming up next, 
We're going to take a look at some speedy big boys, actually. Some bigger wide receivers potentially on the move, making some waves here before the season. Devontae Adams, Mike Evans, what we do with these guys and wh what should happen with them. We got that coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Ross, how do you feel about your fashions lately? Um, well, it's, I've taken a step up, that's for sure. Is it because of some uh, bird dog stretch khaki shorts that fit slimmer exactly through the thigh right. and leg, giving that's, you a tr truly sculpted look? <laughs> that's those are the ones. I I'm, I'm wearing exactly the, the joggers right it? now. I'm literally wearing there the joggers you go. at this moment. You bird dogs it. make you look good when you look good. You feel good. They fit way better than regular shorts. Look, especially for dudes, shorts are like baggy. They don't fit right. A lot of them are made out of like weird cotton blends that aren't even that comfortable and aren't particularly flattering. So why don't you go with bird dogs that has their cloud knit fabric looks just like khaki, but it stretches so that you get a much slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement and flexibility. And they're functional for any occasion from gulp, golf to an evening out or just like chilling by the pool lounging around even going on a date uh go to birddogs.com slash locked on nfl you can enter promo code locked on nfl at checkout for a free bird dogs water bottle with your order that's birddogs.com slash locked on nfl for a free water bottle at checkout you won't want to take your bird dogs off we promise you All right, everybody, continuing on with today's episode of Locked in NFL. Thanks so much, as always. Make it your first listen of the day every day. Hey, while you're here and after the show, make sure you hang out over on Locked in NFL and check out our NFL Ultimate Preview Series for 2023. All 32 teams represented, as well as some insight from our national shows, breaking down the beginning of the NFL season for you right here. The on only the way that only Locked on Podcast Network can do it. Check us out, Locked on NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast all right luke so we got through the hardest part extend hold out Ugh, trade I'm still sweating still sweating still sweating um <laughs> but you can't see your sweat because of your your stretch cloud knit fabric from bird dogs that's so that's yep. good um so now we're going to take a look at the wide receivers i mentioned we were going to talk about some speedy big boys Devonte adams mike evans both speedy big boys both speedy big boys and, and you know these guys are, are are remarkably talented uh wide receivers in the trade rumors the contract negotiation when it comes to mike evans the um trade rumors have been swirling around Devonte adams uh over the course of you know the entire off season um i'm gonna be honest i think that the Devonte adams trade rumors all come from convenience more than they come from like an actual catalyst within the Raiders organization. So let's start there and I'll explain what mm. I mean. When I say that it comes from convenience, I think that there are sometimes these situations to where a quarterback changes teams and that quarterback has a good relationship with a player or two that were all that's also on that team. Uh, and then all of a sudden it becomes a story. You know what I mean? Like we see the this Derek pretty Carr often. factor. Yes. So Derek Carr, of course, goes from the Las Vegas Raiders to the New Orleans Saints. And now all of a sudden, because Devontae Adams went to the Raiders specifically to play with Derek Carr, that kind of opened up this whole thing about, well, now that Derek Carr is gone, what does Devontae Adams do? And some have entertained the idea that he could be traded to the Saints to reunite with Derek Carr. I don't see that happening as the Saints guy here. I don't think that that's going to be happening anytime soon. Um, unless trade deadline injury to Michael Thomas, something like that. But I don't think that that's happening before the season. And so I, I do feel a little bit like it's a, all right, Derek Carr's not there anymore. Devontae Adams doesn't want to be there anymore, but that doesn't seem to actually be the case coming out of the Raiders organization and coming from Devontae Adams. Man, look, if you're a Raiders fan, you're on high alert right now. Man. Because <laughs> I think if you if you look at these two situations too, one team expects its fans to take it seriously, and that's the Raiders. They think that mm -hmm. they have constructed with Jimmy Garoppolo and Devontae Adams. They think that they are constructing a team that can actually go blow for blow with some with some of these powerhouses in the AFC and make a run at this. Um, whether you believe them or not is fine. I think middling teams in the NFL believe that they're good teams in the NFL. That is the natural order of things, and it should yes. be that way. Yes. Uh, the Buccaneers, I do not think, expect you to take them very seriously. They they're trotting Baker Mayfield out there, and honestly, if they they wanted to trot out Kyle Trask, and they just couldn't like justify it, <laughs> they're going for a quarterback next year. I think we all know that they're going for a quarterback next year. I think it's likely that the Raiders end up going to a quarterback, go, end up going for a quarterback next year in the draft. But I don't know if they've admitted that yet. 
Mm-hmm. And I think trading away Devonte Adams would be admitting that in a way that I yeah. don't think that they want to do. This is I'm totally speculating and trying to just read the actions of the organization. But going for Jimmy Garoppolo is essentially saying, yeah, we can go get a quarterback that delivers balls reasonably on time, has some flaws, but is ultimately a starting quality QB in the NFL. We don't need to break down our entire build here to go to try and get the number one, number two overall pick for right. Caleb Williams or whatever. We feel like we can actually make a team that wins ball games. Um, and the Buccaneers are kind of in a in, in the the decline part before they go up and they're recognizing yeah. that and saying, all right, let's go get our quarterback of the future and start looking at our next chapter. So when I look at Devonte, now look, if Devonte Adams wants out and doesn't want to be a part of that situation, he can't do a lot about that as a, an organization, you know, uh, other than the actual interpersonal part of, you know, Josh McDaniel call talking to him. Right. Right. Um, and trying to, to work out that relationship. But if you can't work out the relationship, it's suddenly doesn't really become about, uh, you know, should they or shouldn't they trade him? It's about, okay, he doesn't want to play here. Let's see what we can get. Mm-hmm. Um, so if that's true, that just sucks for the Raiders. But if the Raiders want to be taken seriously and they want to be a team that you look at them and say, yeah, they're in a, a, a division with the Chiefs and the Chargers and maybe the Broncos have a renaissance. You know, they're in this AFC West. Uh, but yeah, you know, maybe they can make it the playoffs and make a run. At, like if you want us to talk about the Raiders that way, you need Devontae Adams on that team. Yep, Without Devontae 100%. Adams, that team is so deeply unserious that I, 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 it just runs so counter to the way the Raiders have approached this offseason, which could have been the moment where you go, hey, you know, a lot of QBs coming out in 2024. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Um, but no, they went Jimmy Garoppolo and we're going to make a run on this. We're not going to give up on ourselves just because Pat Mahomes is in our division, which I respect. Yep. You got to keep him. As for the Bucks, is Mike Evans going to be part of your next chapter? They're looking at their next chapter. They're not mm-hmm. trying to make Super Bowl runs with Baker Mayfield. I don't think they expect anybody to believe that they are. Uh, but Mike Evans, you know, getting long in the tooth. Is he going to be around when you actually feel like you're a serious team again? You know, with your 2024 rookie QB, maybe going into his second year, 2025. Will Mike Evans still be there? Do we want to be paying him a lot of money in that build? Or do we just, you know, maybe trade him away and see if we can't get a draft pick and just say, all right, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're building to something else here. As long as you're building to that something else with a focus, I'm a lot more sympathetic to the idea of, you know, trading a player like Mike Evans on the eve of week one or whatever. Um, but we'll see. I think the real intrigue with Evans is, is, is he going to play week one, right? Right. Or is he that's that's really the, yeah, that's really going to be the biggest thing. And I think there's a lot of folks who have kind of said, oh, well, the Saints, I mean, the Saints, the Bucks should entertain, you know, potentially trading away Mike Evans, but it doesn't mean that that's what they're looking to do. It's just right now it's a little bit more of like, is he going to be out on the field? It's kind of like the, the Nick Bosa situation, right? Nick, Nick Bosa, will he be on the field for the San Francisco 49ers as they match up with mm-hmm. the Pittsburgh Steelers? Much like last year, the Pittsburgh Steelers had their holdout with TJ Watt until what, two days before the NFL season began. So it's like a little bit of kind of history repeating itself just at a different position in this case. And so I, I, I'm with you all on this one. I I think the Devontae Adams, like I mentioned, the Devontae Adams trade talk to me just feels like out of convenience more than anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that kind of a narrative. I don't think that the Raiders should go that route. I think that the Raiders should do whatever. Yeah, you should hold on to Devontae Adams. You gave up assets for him. You've already paid him a bunch of money. Like lean in, see where you are at the trade deadline, and then maybe, maybe then you can make that kind of move if you're you know, you can't get Jimmy Garoppolo out on the field or there's an injury or, you know, things aren't coming together and the natural order has just kind of befallen the organization in that way to where they're maybe on a little bit more of a rebuild than they expected. But you still have Max Crosby. You invested in your defense with guys like Devon Weatherspoon and all that. Like there's so many of these little pieces that they have that are still exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you hold yeah, on like to Hunter will, Renfro and see what you can do. build to the next thing. Right. Like yeah, they don't like, have a not- roster like, like Houston's, which we'll talk yeah. about in a sec. Where right. you, you're like, wow, we just have to put together every position is a need now. Like, it needs all, you know? Like, they're not in that spot. So I think it makes sense for them to say, no, we can, like, kind of try to drag this out one more time with a, with yep. a real quarterback since we got a, a few good players we're happy about on a, on a rookie deal. Um, and then when it's time to get the new quarterback, you know, you, you're, you're not putting them in the Justin Fields situation where they're surrounded by so much crap that they can't, uh, right. like, develop the way that you want. So I think that they're in a reasonable spot like if they do trade Devontae Adams away. But then just don't ask me to take the Raiders seriously. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I agree. With that. I think you. I think you hold on to him, and then with Mike Evans, you kind of just see where all this goes and, and see how it gets up. But I imagine both of these players will be playing for the organizations that they're currently on, uh, going into this regular season. That's just so. Maybe often we the revisit case. it on the trade deadline. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred trade deadline makes a lot of sense for both of these guys as a spot to kind of go. Okay, what's the trajectory of the organization now, and what could that potentially mean for the player moving forward? Mm-hmm. Um, coming up next. There is uh, there, you know, college football is in the the first week of college football is in the books. One of the things that we learned is basically like whoever Deion Sanders is drafting, the NFL should be paying or whoever uh, Deion Sanders is coaching, the NFL should be paying attention to. We're going to break that down and much more as we get to yike and like to wrap up today's episode of Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. If you want to maybe make some bets, on uh, say those week one games, which are of course coming up, we've got uh, Chiefs Lions coming up soon. Why don't you go over to America's number one sports book? That is FanDuel, and there's a sick uh, endorsement going on right now. New customers can bet five dollars and get two hundred back in bonus bets guaranteed. That is it. Make a five dollar bet, and you can get two hundred bucks in bonus bets. But it doesn't end there. All customers, whether you're new or not. Can get who bet five dollars will get one hundred dollars off of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use. You can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. So go to fanduel.com slash locked on and you can kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. Go make one five dollar bet and you can even go get NFL Sunday ticket and watch those bets go down. Once again, that is fanduel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, everybody, wrapping up today's episode of Locked on NFL with our Yike and Like, as we do every single week. Yike, something we didn't like from the week. Like, something we did like from the week. And Luke, mm-hmm. I'm going to start us off with my like today. Um, and and yeah, look, this is simple. Uh, Deion Sanders leading the Colorado Buffaloes to uh, the same amount of wins that they had last season in just one week. Um, in the entirety of last season in just one week. They were outstanding. He was outstanding. He was impassioned. And, and the way that I look at this from the NFL perspective is that if if you're an NFL team and you have the opportunity, whether it be in 2024, 2025 draft, whatever it might be, a guy like Travis Hunter, who's going to probably have another year before he comes out, um, you should be paying attention to the players that Dion is coaching. Um, because A that performance against the national championship appearing TCU Horn Frogs was incredible. It was outstanding, but also you can just see the impact that he has on getting these guys ready for the next level. And I'm really excited to see what his track record becomes as not only a collegiate coach, but as an NFL player producing coach, I think he's going to do a fantastic job there. I'm so curious about that because they have, you know, a guy like Travis Hunter who's playing two ways. What kind of wear and tear does that put on your body? Mm -hmm. But also, how does that translate? I think the lesson for me and I don't follow follow college football very closely. Mm -hmm. So I only have this sort of uh, like outside knowledge. But it sounded like everybody for the whole offseason talked a bunch of crap about how everybody left Colorado and that they'd have this roster that didn't have a lot of established talent on it, but they bought in. And I think that's the lesson here is the value of buying in, of having whatever that head coach's vision is, whether it's Deion Sanders or someone in the NFL. um, When you buy into what, when everybody buys into the same thing and that vision can truly be executed, it can really make a difference and it can make up for a lot of, you know, maybe you'll have more two and three star kids on, on that team. Who cares? They bought in, they played as a team. They went home with the dub. Um, they were outstanding and shout out to HBCU talent, by the way, making the leap into this FBS program. There are a lot of like Jackson state guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, guys like Shador Sanders, Travis Hunter was a Jackson state guy. Other, I mean, it was, you know, so, so you're right. It was a lot of, there was like a lot of focus on, Oh, well, these players left Colorado. Well, those players left Colorado after, after winning one game last season. Meanwhile, um, 
you know, a 27 game win streak in the SWAC, a lot of talent coming from Deion Sanders program followed him to Colorado. And then now you got to see them perform at the next level. So those folks that, that you highlighted that were concerned about the talent that was leaving Colorado missed on the talent that was entering Colorado following Deion Sanders there. And that's where that mm -hmm. buy-in really comes from. Cause you didn't just have Dion, you know, buying into prime time, you were buying into the other players that had already bought into primetime already had Which, that relationship with them. Yeah. And that helps establish things too. Huge. Cause it's like, Hey, yeah, no, this is how we did things at Jackson state. Like this yep. is how we, we operate here. And there's a, uh, you're, you're not trying to get an entirely new group of people to believe in something that none of them have believed in before. Yep. That can be really, really hard for new coaches coming into a team. Um, or, you can have uh, completely new rosters all the time coming. Here's the deal. I'm going to bellyache a little bit. My yike goes to the Houston Texans. This okay. is uh, spurred on by Kenyon Green going on IR. Ah, uh, uh, yes. And uh, does end his season. So mm -hmm. they don't have a first round pick now, which was, I believe, the first round pick that they got. The first first round pick they got for Deshaun Watson was for a guard that's no longer playing for you. And when you're going to be like Houston, which I don't think that they necessarily are, should be a, an example of tanking. I think they just sucked for so long that their roster has been ground into a nub. Um, but when you're in that situation where you have a totally blank slate, a bunch of draft picks and a bunch of cap, you have to hit on everything. Yeah, because you can't make a roster from the ground up, like a, a, a singular offseason with you know, seven rounds worth of draft picks and a normal amount of cap space is a great way to bolster a roster you already have to target it, fix problems, try to, you know, get new talent. But to build a roster from the ground up, it takes a lot more than that. And if you have a lot more than that, that's fine. But you cannot afford bad luck. So my yike goes to the Houston Texans, who, after all of these years, being a four win team since to what 2020 when they were in the playoffs 2019 when they were in the playoffs and they blew that lead against the chiefs they have been a bottom dwelling team and they are still in a mode where they just cannot withstand bad luck i hope cj stroud is the next coming for them houston texans fans deserve more because right now all they're getting is one yike yeah that stinks that's a that's a that's a stinky way to enter the post deshaun watson uh, you know, you, uh, you get a player cornerstone guard, whatever, like forgetting positional value being weird there. Like, all right, we got a player. That's our, you know, our, our tone set. Ah, uh, he's, he's hurt his shoulders after the season. All right. Well, I guess there's next year for us to maybe win five games and feel like we're at all climbing out of this disastrous franchise threatening hole that we've been in for the last half decade. I guess there's 2024, like go to sleep, <laughs> Houston fans, like watch the Astros or something. There's nothing for you here. I really do hope that CJ Stroud is good, but man, it's going to be very, very tough when you're when because they have so many injuries on the offensive line now, and they're dealing with so much on the offensive line now. They make the move for Josh Jones, and you end up with an injury there. Then you have this Kenyon Green injury. You had injuries that led you down that path for the acquisition and trade, all these other things. And so mm -hmm. it, it's just so much. How good can your quarterback be if your offensive line isn't healthy? Right? I mean, that's that's always going to be such a such a big piece. Right. Of I it. hope it doesn't stunt his development because he's a really Same. exciting player. Yep, agree. Um, my yike, speaking of exciting players, Cooper Cup, man, th this whole Cooper Cup situation is Ugh. so wild. The hamstring injury that goes on for a while. Uh, Sean McVay giving it so sinister, very tough, very tough. And, and it's and hamstrings, one of the things that makes hamstrings so tough is like, like the grades of hamstrings and the severity of the injury always varies. But in any case, the risk of re injury is always so high. It's always kind of a, you know, Julio Jones was derailed by hamstring injuries, things like that. Chris Godwin has been recently impacted by them. I mean, like we see those, uh, particularly, particularly at wide receiver, we see those injuries. These are those soft tissue injuries that just keep popping up, popping up, popping up. And so when it comes to Cooper Cup, we get the update after kind of already what feels like, it feels like years of, of hamstring news for Cooper Cup over the course of this offseason uh, that he's. In Minnesota, seeing a specialist uh, to try to figure out the core of the injury, the cause of the injury effectively, or, or, or like what, what is, which it, it, that's not a good sign. That's not a good sign. No. And this isn't a yike about like, oh, well, the Rams messed up or that there's something wrong with Cooper Cup or whatever. It's just, this it's just, just like, happens. There's, yeah, there's like, no, you can't prevent this kind of thing. You, you come up with a rehab strategy and then sometimes you hit a setback or, or it didn't, it presented differently than, than it was. And it's just yep. luck. 
it's just so hard to deal with a hamstring injury. And, and I mean, uh, it stinks because the, the one thing you really needed to go right. If you're the Rams offense outside of, of course, Matt Stafford was Cooper cup. And, and maybe the one thing you were sure that was going to go right on the offense was Cooper cup. And, and now kind of like this, this weird left turn, uh, is here. So it, it stinks. And for me, that's why it's a yike because it, it, it sucks to see. Well, I can end on something positive here. Mm -hmm. Uh, my like is some Homer nonsense. Uh, Kyle Rudolph signs a one day contract to retire a Minnesota Viking. There's been all sorts of nostalgia around the world of the Vikings, uh, about Kyle Rudolph played for Minnesota all the way through 2020, I believe was his last season. Um, was a cornerstone for an incredibly tumultuous decade. He joined in 2012 and they fired a coach two years into his tenure. They had, you know, drafted Teddy Bridgewater. He got hurt. Case Keenum, Sam Bradford, all of this stuff, all the way into the first few years of the Kirk Cousins era and the Cousins Rudolph connection. Very fun in the red zone. All sorts of great highlights. One I'm sure you would like to forget, Ross. <sighs> <laughs> Along uh, with the rest overtime. of 2020, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole season, that whole calendar year, huh? Um, but yeah, there's all kinds of great memories for Kyle Rudolph. But honestly, I, I've said this about Rudolph for a few years now. I think the way that the state of Minnesota will remember him will have nothing to do with football at all because of the impact that he Touch has had on side. Minneapolis uh, with his end zone project at the Children's Hospital has been has deeply, deeply, deeply touched a lot of lives. And, you know, there are a lot of players that do philanthropy because it's good PR. And I don't think that that's necessarily a problem, right? Good work's good work. Right. Um, but there are some players for guys like Kyle Rudolph um, where it's an identity. It's who he is. Uh, honestly, as much as his identity is, I am Kyle Rudolph, Rudolph football player. He is also Kyle Rudolph guy who cares about six sick kids. And I, I think it's awesome. And that work will continue. He didn't even move when he went to other teams. He just kind of, uh, he's, he's kept home base at Minnesota. He'll be a Minnesota legend. Honestly, he could run for Congress and win someday. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's really exciting and good for him. I, I always love seeing a player go back to the one day contract thing. It's like one of my favorite things in sports. It's so wholesome. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just a good story. You know what I mean? And especially somebody that's had that kind of impact, not just on the football field, but in the community uh, and in other people's lives, like life-changing work, like you deserve it. And, 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 and that's awesome. As much as, I, um, as much as I still think it was a push-off, um, fantastic <laughs> stuff. Fantastic stuff. Yeah, you won't find much sympathy from me. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Deservedly so. Um, <laughs> So shout out Kyle Rudolph, shout out to all the work that he's doing, and shout out to you for being here with us for another episode of Locked on NFL. Coming up for you tomorrow, James and Tony bring you everything you need in terms of the biggest questions around the NFL and much more here on the Locked on Podcast Network all throughout the rest of the week. For Luke Braun at Luke Braun NFL on the app formerly known as Prince, I am Ross Jackson at Ross Jackson Nola. You can find us uh, wherever on social media. And of course, we will see you next week here on Locked on NFL, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.